All right, welcome everybody to another mixing video. Today we're going to be looking at something that I actually didn't plan on doing today, but um, today I'm kind of a little bit pressed for time. So what we're going to look for or look at today is how to make a lead vocal wider, how to get width in a lead vocal. So um, I'm going to show three easy ways of doing this, and I'm going to kind of go from my favorite method to my least favorite method. And all three of these are going to involve a stereo delay. So I'm going to call up my vocal channel and add an effects channel to it. It'll be a stereo effect. And I'm going to use a stock Steinberg uh, stereo delay, which is named stereo delay. I'm going to route this to my vocal effects. And I'll call this vocal widener. Widener. Excuse me. Okay, so do my favorite one for this track at least, um, and then we'll work our way to my sort of least favorite. So I'm going to start by making this 100% wet, um, just to, just because it's on a send. If you had it on an insert, then you could adjust the mix to your liking. Um, I'm going to first start off with these filters out just to hear if I like the delay times. And I'm actually going to turn the feedback all the way off. I'm going to start with a very short delay time, 10 milliseconds and maybe 16. Okay, real short. It's not going to sound like a delay at all, really. Um, it's just going to give it some width and make it stereo. So let's check it out and I'll adjust the filters um, accordingly. Okay, so I did a little bit of bypassing of it there. So essentially, what I did was just have two separate delay times on the left and right, which introduces something called the Haas effect. Now, I'm not a scientist, so I'm not going to go ahead and explain what that is, but you can go and Google it and research it on your own. But to my understanding, the Haas effect is basically tricking your ears um, into thinking something sounds wider by having a delay uh, two separate, the same source sounding at two separate times on the left and right side. So, this is a pretty easy one. Um, it almost sounds like like a flanging effect of some sort. So, the next one I'm going to show you, I'm going to actually sync up the tempo. And I'm going to keep the filters the same. And let me go ahead and explain why I chose the filters. Um, when you have two separate EQ settings on the left and right of the same source, it gives it a little bit of separation. Um, people do this a lot with guitars. They call it complementary EQ. But this is just with filters. So uh, obviously this one is a little bit darker. This one's a little bit brighter. So uh, just two different flavors on the left and right side, basically. So. The next one, I'm syncing up the tempo. I have a quarter note delay on the left, and on the right, I have 
a eighth note delay. And um, I actually don't think that I have the tempo synced up in this track. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get that information right now. Um, I selected my kick track, go to project, tempo detection, analyze. And let me go ahead and check this against the, the metronome. Okay, so now we got our our uh, tempo synced up. Now, um, this somehow got messed up, so I'll have a quarter note and an eighth note, and um, I'll adjust that to taste, and then we'll uh, do a little bit more tweaking, and then I'll explain what's going on. So this is a pretty cool technique. I like this one. Um, just have to dial the feedback to taste depending on how many repeats you want of a quarter note and how many repeats you want of the eighth notes. And essentially, that's it. That's all there is to it. Um, and then you have to adjust it to the volume that you like, which I would probably automate this, actually, because in the chorus part, I might want a little bit more. And in these verse parts, I would want a little bit less because it's a little bit too ping-pongy for this kind of track. And in fact, I probably wouldn't use something like this for this kind of track. But like a pop track or something like that, this is a great, great technique. And you can hear, um, I soloed it on purpose there for you so you could hear the, how this really bounces around from the left to right. And that uh, really gives you a sense of width. So let me turn this EQ off and we'll show the last, um, the last trick here. So I'm going to unsync this and I'm going to go for... It's a, this is similar to the very first trick that I showed you, but um, this time we're going to use a very short delay time. So, um, excuse me, I, I believe I just said the a short delay time. The first one was short, this one's a little bit longer. Still fairly short, but this one's more of a slap. So um, I have 166 milliseconds over here and 156. So basically you just want 10, millise uh, 10 milliseconds of difference on each side. And once again, I'm going to keep the filter and panning settings the same. And um, let's hear how this sounds in, this, in the context of this track. All this 
wild, lonely dreams I won't follow them Somewhere at the bottom of the deep is where life realize I'm lost in So, in all honesty, this one is my least favorite for this kind of track. But for a maybe like a blues track, this would be my absolute favorite. Uh, I love this on like a blues vocal and also on like a blues guitar. This sounds great on a lead guitar for a blues track. Um, but for this track, um, I actually am not a huge fan of any of these uh, widening um, besides the first one. First one is quite subtle and it just gives it a little bit of a flange. It's one of those things that you can really tuck it under the vocal. Um, this one makes the vocals kind of sound like it's sitting back a little bit more. Um, but it does make it wider. So uh, I would probably add like a exciter or something just to bring the vocal forward again. Um, just to give it that 3D depth, you know. Have the vocal come towards the front and have this delay kind of sit in the back. So it's widening things out and then adding some depth too. So, you know, not everything works for every mix, but you can take these these techniques and try them out in your different mixes. Find which one works for you. Um, adjust different filter and EQ settings. Try different delay times. Um, with the, the one where I did the quarter note and the eighth note, you could do a sixteenth and an eighth. You could do a sixteenth and a thirty-second. You could do a quarter and a thirty-second. Whatever you want. Um, just experiment with these things and see what works for you. Take these concepts that I show you guys and make them your own. So, I hope you enjoyed this video. I really hope you learned something new. These are pretty cool tricks. I hope you try them out in your own mixes. So, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like this video, you can give it a thumbs down. That's okay. You're entitled to your opinion, as I always say. If you really like this video, please, please, please subscribe. I would greatly, greatly appreciate that. Thank you so very much for watching, and I hope to see you next time. Have a great day.